off. Ooh, don't you know me? Lay off him. That's Bo Latimer. Oh, that's mighty respectful of you. I thought you were in Leavenworth. I was pardoned eight days ago. I haven't anything. Anything at all. Why, honey bee, you just don't give yourself credit, that's all. <laughs> come on, come on. Ah, easy now. I'm a peaceable man. Come on, get out. What you got here? Bring that here. That stink is sovereign remedy, boys. A sure cure for the humors of the stomach and the lungs. Also for heartburn, gallstones, and infection of the ear. On rising, pour some into your boots. Alleviate footache. Ah. Sure glad to have you boys have a free sample. That other one, what's he got there? Jimmy! Ah. Hey. <laughs> well, looky here. Hey, that's all right. You got any more of these? No. Go take a look. Jewels. He was carrying jewels in that. Nothing more in here. Let's go. We've done all right here. <laughs> Out of my way. Stone is here. Priceless jewels. Those others are any rubbish. I carry them just to be robbed. A uh, uh, jewel here? Let me help. Hey there. Get aboard. I got a man hurt. Come on, friends. Come on. I can't leave without it. The guard's been shot. He'll need a doctor. Come on, get him in. You don't have to stand the fortune stone. Come on, friend. No, he's right here. Yeah, he's right. But he's right Come on. I just want... Please, let's go. He's ah. right here. Ah. It's here. Drive up. Ah. territory, trouble was always with you, either coming at you or right on top of you. The U.S. Marshal's job was to meet trouble head on, but sometimes it didn't come the way you expected. Like the time a simple stagecoach holdup set off a plague of greed and murder that rocked the whole of Guthrie. I am Louis Fescu, courier for the Jewel House, Amboise et Fils, New Orleans. I am on my way to San Francisco. Those documents you have are description drawings and insurance papers on the fortune stone. Now I beg of you, let me go back and find it. Diamond pendant? Thirty carats, valued at one hundred thousand dollars. Yes. Now you understand. Mr. Fescue. You sure it's back there on that road? Oh, you mean that they would take it? Oh, no, I watched them. Mr. Fescue, tomorrow morning you can go back out there with Deputy Martin. With luck, you should find the stone right away. Until he does, and I'm sorry about this, I'll have to hold you all here in Guthrie. And I'll ask you all to submit to a personal search. Marshal, do you have a charge against us? No. And you can't order a search, can you? Well, no. And I don't care for it, thanks. Well, I won't be searched unless he is. Well, I don't know who'd search Mr. Neen. Not you, I'll tell you that. Hank, take him over to the hotel. Well, what about them highwaymen? They took my wallet and my watch. They're reported heading for Stillwater. I've alerted our office there to be on the lookout. This way, folks. Rescue. You can start early as you want tomorrow. Probably find it first thing. I hope so. It is a wolf. What? The idea of a jewel. A jewel itself is useless. Priceless and useless. But the idea of a jewel. People do terrible things. I've seen it. The idea of a jewel lost. It's like a wolf set loose in the soul. Horses in the stables. I'll see you after work, all. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. Nina. Easy, girl. You got me, Nimisry girl.
Marcella, or I'll cut your fire. Give that to me. <laughs> so hard about. Do you think I wanted your poor scrap of money? You thought I had that diamond? I'm embarrassed to say I did. Well, rest assured, Mr. Latimer. I'm not a lucky girl. No, but you're a cool one. You're not afraid now, eh? Men don't frighten me, sir. What well, does? Poverty? That's right. I've seen a lot of it. I'm a mail order bride, Mr. Latimer. I'm on my way to marry a man I've never seen. His handwriting's legible. He says he has 500 acres of good land. And he changes his shirt every week. You can do better than that. Yes. You have quality. You're not one of these corn-fed heifers. Change your hair a bit, give you a spot of color. Dress that sets you off. Then what, Mr. Latimer? Then what? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what. You don't have the fortune stone, I don't. Fescue didn't take it with him. The driver and the guard never left the stage. Who's left? You mean that, that Mr. Denker has it? A oh, fact medicine man. Perhaps you and I working together can find out. matter afraid you don't understand I I've never done anything wrong I've even taught school I've taught little children to to tell the truth not to steal obey the law yes that is for children turn around to me that's better you know now's the time to think clear You've led a poor, gray, scraping life. You can go right on. You can travel on out to that plow pusher and spend the rest of your life hauling water. Or you can team with Bo Latimer. $100,000. Have you thought of it? Yes. Oh, I can see it somewhere behind your eyes. Your luck sat down in front of me. teach you everything. I think to see you later, good girl. Ollie! Where are you two? Of town. Did you get paid? Mm-hmm. Ollie, do you mean to go gambling again? Well, well you want to get ma married, don't you? Yes. Well, Marion takes money and get gambling's a way to get it. Work's the way to get it. The good Lord put work in our hands. Oh, don't, don't blather. I'm not. Ollie, it's wrong you're doing. Ollie! <laughs> to trouble you, but there's no one else about, and I, I feel quite faint. Well, glad to help. Uh, won't you come in? Oh, could you help me to my room? Let's breathe. Yes, yes. Thank you. It's been such a terrible day. Those awful robbers. Oh, it's awful. Now you just sit down, Anna. Lean back. And don't move. I've got just the thing to fix you up.
don't worry, my dear. This isn't the usual. Uh, this is Dinka's special Mayors and Parsons formula. A little more uh, invigorating. <laughs> interest, dear, and you'll rise in my organization. Uh, no, 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 no. You know, we fold them like this. Uh, you see? Oh. Uh, you stay here, dear. Uh, Professor Murchison. Uh, Good morning, Miss Begley. How's the undertaking business? You uh, heard about the gambler over at the saloon. Heard he's been cleaning out everybody in town. Well, last night, he ran out of luck. 
Somebody took unkindly to getting cards from the bottom of the deck. Oh, I see. Uh, then you have a thing or two for me, hmm? Oh, it's all right, my new hired girl. I got to get paid for burying him, don't I? Well, of course, of course. Well, that's all right. Ivory handle, give you a quarter. Mm-hmm. Four dollars. And he had this. Well, chain might be silver, but I doubt it. Dollar and a half. No, 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 Professor. Pro professor, please. Sir, please. Now, be reasonable, Professor. Here, look. Look, look at these beauties. Three dollars a piece and still I have trouble moving them. Now, you just compare. Not half the size and very plain set. Now, that had some color, like a garnet or amethyst, say. Dollar sixty. All right, Professor. Dollar seventy-five and done. <laughs> Will Foreman will be back this morning. He'll have a pretext to search us now. But he won't find anything. Benke didn't have the stone, we don't. No, but it's somewhere about, and I mean to have it. <laughs> Why cry, girl? You were splendid last night. He was a silly, frenzy little man. And I helped to kill him. Benke? So you did. Get up. <laughs> Get up. <laughs> he, he meant no harm. Everyone means harm. Little people just shy away from it. If you want that diamond, make up your mind now, girl. You won't get it shying away. To get a thing, learn to want it. Make you want a knife's edge, and what stands in your way, cut it through. But I've never done this before. I'm not like this. You're afraid to want. I'll show you how. You're afraid of violence, I'll show you more. Keep with me, girl, there's a fortune at the end. But where is it now? Where is it now? Hid. Oh, it'll come out, take my word. But right now it's hid, deep hid, dark hid, when no one can see it. Those people were in it. Ollie, you promise you won't tell anyone. 
swear it? Not a soul. Ollie, there was a great, big, huge diamond stole from one of those passengers. Diamond? It was a diamond? I'm, uh, I'm sorry about all this, Mr. Neen. I haven't enjoyed it. Only because of the circumstances. If you don't mind, I'd like to get on with my journey. With Mr. Latimer? Why do you say that? I'm not personally acquainted. Mr. Byman! Mr. Byman! Get here! He saw it. He had it in his hand last night. Had what? Rooney? A uh, 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 horse. Well, one, one of the coach's horse. horses had it embedded in his hoof. A big stone on a chain. Ollie found it, but he thought it was glass. What'd you do with it, Ollie? Oh, I g g g ah, he gambled it away in that saloon. He was cheated of it before the gambler got shot. That gambler was buried this morning. Diamond's probably still on him. Only one way to find out. Mr. Foreman, was there a reward? Yeah, a thousand dollars. Insurance company. That would have been our marriage money, I think. Nina. Good day, Mr. Nina. Ma'am. Who is it? Oh, the marshals. I heard, I heard. What'll they do now? Could they got that gambler. And get the stone? If it was buried with him. What? Foreman's an honest man. He thinks like an honest man. That's his disadvantage sometimes. You stay here. I'll be back soon. That'll be five cents. Yeah, thank you. Those brats. Okay, chase them out of the back before they break some. Oh, yes, Mr. Bates. Jewelry, a clear stone pendant on a silver chain. I beg your pardon? Don't be coy with me. That's stolen goods. I talked to your corpse robbing friend, the undertaker, and he told me when you got the jewel and how. I want it. Now, if you're sensible, we can talk business. Well, if I had such a thing, what's it worth to you? I'll be outright with you, Mr. Bagley. That stone is a genuine zircon. Worth a hundred dollars? Uh, Kate! hundred dollars? Yes, Mr. Bagley? Oh, Kate, that pendant you're wearing. That you gave me, Mr. Bagley? Yes. You want it back, Mr. Bagley? Well, come here, girl, come. It's gone. Where is it? Well, the pendant was loose. It must have slipped off. Uh, oh, you... Would that be it? Yes, find it, man, find it. What is it, Mr. Bagley? That Shut up and help, Luke! Where'd you lose it? Perhaps it was out back when I was chasing the children. Children? You silly fool, you cost me a hundred dollars. Oh, you're really a terrible man, aren't you? You're really a terrible fool. Wait a minute, girl. Let it go, Bigley. I'm Bo Latimer. I'm registered at the hotel. If that stone turns up or if you find it, get word to me. Just to me, do you understand? A hundred dollars in your pocket. I'll find it. I'll find it. I'll find it. Here, it has to be here. Shovel them in, dig them up, and they talk about eternal rest. I don't get extra pay for this, you know. Easy day, hard day. It's all the same to the city. It's a mercy I found the right one. I might have turned up that medicine salesman instead. <sighs> Nothing. Now what? Well, we'll go by the saloon. He might have given it to one of the girls. Let's go. At least you could drop a word to the mayor, how I cooperated. I get paid to put them down, you know, not get them up. Yeah, we'll do that. On my lunch hour, too. Then we'll drop by the newspaper office and give them the news. Well, I thought you wanted to keep quiet. No point not now. It's here in town. And it's bound to help. Somebody will read about the reward in the paper and then bring it to us.
Sorry, I do not believe it. Well, that's bound to be it. The description, the way the stable boy found it right in town. Mr. Deputy, people get excited. They read about the jewel, then everything they see, every little piece of glass. No, it's not there. Believe me, it's here, here in the dust. Well, I sure hope it don't rain. Mr. Deputy, go away, please. Leave me alone. The stone is here. I have it almost in my hand. Come on, son. Give it to us, huh? Little boy, would you like some candy? I'll give you the whole bag. Oh, you got slickers. I don't like slickers. Oh, come on, son. Give it to me, huh? Take it away from him. Just take it away from him. Be quiet. Now, look, son. You know that's not yours. The others told us where you found it behind Bagley's store. Tell you what. You want a knife? A watch. A gold watch and a, and a gold chain. I'll get it. Wait! Miss Dean? Bo? I was over you left town. What are you doing now? Just walking about. I can see you're well acquainted. Is there any law against it? I don't know. I'll have to look. In the meantime, I advise you to pack. There's a stage leaving for Topeka at 4 o'clock. All right, Will. There's nothing to keep us here. control of yourself. Look, you go that way, I'll go this. Daisy! What, Daisy? Why, hello, Baze. What do you got? Well, it's something I had sent on for little Ruth called a wind bell. Is your little girl still sick? Yes, she's quite sick. She misses playing with you, Bays. Is she gonna die? I'd better get on, Bays. Can I put my feet on that? It'll make a noise. Your what? Oh, oh, yes, that would be very nice of you, Bays. That's a pretty piece of glass. Can you tie it on there all right? Yes. Well, thank you, Bays. I'll tell Ruth you said it. Goodbye. Goodbye. gave you a bead. Wasn't that nice of him? And now I'll hang it here, where the wind can blow it. How do you do? I'm just traveling through town, and I was walking about, and I saw that in your window. Wind bells, I think they called them. Uh, may I look at it? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Our, our child's not well, you see. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. What's the matter with her? We don't know. We'd hoped to take her to St. Louis, to the hospital there, but we haven't been able to... Well, 
Tell me, would you sell it? What? The wind bell. I'd, I'd love to have it. Mrs. Pryor, we bought it for the child. Oh, please. Please, you must let me do this. I'll give you a hundred dollars for that wind bell. What? Well, think of how the money would help the child. I... Oh, Mrs. Pryor. I don't know what... And that would be charity. We couldn't. Oh, no, it's not charity. I'll tell you what. I'll go and get my husband. And if he doesn't agree, it's the best bargain his wife ever made. But if he does agree, then you have to sell it. He's at the hotel. I'll go get him. It won't take a minute. How do you do? Mr. Pryor, your wife has been very generous. Now she told really me mean... all about it, about your little girl there. You see, she's a lovely scatterbrained woman, and I've made it the practice of my life to give her what she wants. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know what to say, sir. Uh, she's a reckless, impulsive girl. But you know, she captivated... What's the matter? Oh, God. Darling. They took it off. Let's get back to the hotel. They took it off. I need rest, dear. I'll be with you in a little while. I'm so sorry, but I don't understand. Well, you see, my, my wife's not entirely well. That's why we're traveling. Oh, uh, anything we can do? No, I'll take care of it. Thanks again. <laughs> Here's your print. Where'd you get that? I mean, uh, would you like to sell me that belt? No, pants fall down. Oh. Well, you asked about a hat. I, I might give you a hat for that belt. No, belt, powerful medicine. Chief's belt. No, no wait, Talkies. Uh, what do you want besides a hat? Give me stove. Stove? A stove for a belt? <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. And then the woman began to talk in that fashion about the, the, the stone she called it being gone. Then later I realized she must have meant that bauble that young Crowley tied on the thing. And they didn't find it down below. They looked. We saw them. Yes, they were acting so strangely we, we, we thought we'd better let you know. Well, we better check the neighborhood fast. And then we better visit them, too. Wait. 
The thing is, they gave us this money for the wind bell. It's not ours by right. You can use the money to help your little girl, can't you? That's not the point. There's what a person has to do. The law. Well, Mr. Davies, it happens I know the law in this case. The law says that you sold a perfectly good wind bell at a fair price. You sure? I'm sure. Goodbye, Miss Davies. Mr. Goodbye. Davies? Goodbye. Goodbye. If you only hadn't scared the boy there at the first. I'm so sorry, Oh, you're Mo. sorry. I tried to teach you. I... Yeah. Storekeeper, foolish trader. Make talkies rich for glass beads. Oh, that Indian. Quiet. My talkies. <laughs> Charlie, Go back to the hotel. Wait for me there. I want to stay with you. No, you're in my way. Go on. Go on.
One more to go. You must have had a terrible time. Well, the wind was pretty bad, yes. And the stagecoaches, six times a day, back and forth. Now, the worst of that herd of sheep. I want you pretty well discouraged. No, sir. I told Mr. Martin, I believe in logic. The fortune stone is here. I work along, I will find it. Mr. Fescue, I believe you. Say, that isn't another herd of sheep up there, is it? What? Where? Where? Up there, up on that rise. No, well, I guess not. Sure look like it, though. I hope not. I pray not. They are indescribable. Well, uh... Heck, I guess we'd better get back into town. You want to quit, Mr. Pescue, and come back with us? We brought an extra horse. No, thank you. And Mr. Foreman, don't ask. I have work. I will finish my work. Well, bye. he misses it. I'd hate to start all over. Wait.